Hello guys, Dr. Mukul Mohindra here, your orthopedic instructor at Anna Academy, and I am here to uh, sharpen your concepts on a very important topic osteoporosis. This is one domain you know that spans across multiple fields. Maybe you are a physician, maybe you are an ops gynae surgeon, maybe you are an orthopedic surgeon, or maybe at times you know even in your family this is a problem that's very much prevalent and you might have to give an advice and then mention not an area that's very indispensable uh, even for your mcqs the neat exam so i'll just like to brief you on osteoporosis regarding the latest treatment options that we have because we're very well aware with the basics but many a times you know questions hot questions come upon the latest treatment trends so that's what i would like to brief you regarding you know the treatment part in osteoporosis now before i you know tell you about the latest treatment options i just like to brief you as how exactly the osteoblasts and the osteoclasts they interact with each other so please just pay attention this particular cell i've drawn in front of you that's the osteoblast and the second cell I've drawn in front of you that's the osteoclast now the parathyroid hormone that would come and attach to its receptor that will be present on osteoblast so PTH attaches to its receptor activating the osteoblast clear now on the surface of the osteoblast you have a protein that is called rankl r a n k l rankl now once this osteoblast is activated by pth <clears throat> this protein rankl dissociates and goes and attaches to its receptor that is present on osteoclast now this activates the osteoclast and I don't think I even need to tell you once osteoclast is activated you very well know the end result bone resorption osteoclasts they are just the cells that are pretty much similar to macrophages they also have this property of phagocytosis with which they lead to bone resorption so I hope you are thoroughly clear you know how osteoclasts resorb bone under the control of parathyroid hormone but with an intervening stage of the osteoblast now with this you know cycle you can understand two very important drugs that are now available in India for the treatment of osteoporosis the first one da no view map so Zumab I think tells you this is a monoclonal antibody so denozumab is a monoclonal antibody only and this is specifically been made to target the rankle proteins I hope that makes sense to you because if you will give denozumab it will block this particular step because it is going to eliminate rankle so if denozumab will eliminate rankle this step cannot pursue so that means a blast cannot activate a clast so bone resorption is going to stop so i hope that tells you the whole story how denizumab is going to work it's something that's going to simply stop bone resorption and if bone resorption stops only formation can pursue i hope that makes sense osteoporosis will benefit you are clear with denizumab with this cycle you will also be very easily clear with this particular drug teriparatide now this teriparatide is actually parathyroid hormone only but i just like to specify this part up it is a very very low dose of recombinant parathyroid hormone recombinant recombinant means artificially manufactured 
when you give parathyroid hormone in such a low dose the the profound effect you see a selective blastic stimulation so this is something that only and only stimulates the osteoblasts i hope now you get it that if only osteoblast is stimulated you will selectively have increase in the bone formation <clears throat> bone formation goes up so again that makes sense osteoporosis is going to benefit so i hope you are clear how teriparatide and denizumab work and i hope you just noted one drug steps up bone formation the other one stops the bone resorption so even if you combine the two drugs we are going to find the combination to be synergistic so this is the best line of treatment you know we have right now with us in india for managing even the most resistant versions of osteoporosis osteoporosis you are very much very much very much familiar with this term it is basically a decrease in bone mineral density bone mineral density so bone mineral means bone calcium content goes down mind you the serum parameters are all normal so normal serum parameters which means normal calcium normal vitamin d uh, normal alkaline phosphatase it is specifically the bone mineral content that goes down by and large the problem is either age related senile osteoporosis or 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 menopause related post menopause because you know after menopause there is loss of that estrogen stimulus to bone mass so estrogen goes down so so bone mass starts going down so either of the two scenarios will lead to decrease in selectively the bone mineral content that's where we'll call it at osteoporosis and i don't think i even need to tell you for the diagnosis you will have to specifically measure the bone mineral content and that's perhaps the reason that you know for diagnosis we opt for this investigation that you call as the dexa scan dual energy x-ray absorptiometry dexa scan because we have to measure the bone mineral content and the moment this dexa scan tells us that you know we are dealing with osteoporosis the first line treatment that we generally start bisphosphonates you are well versed with pharmacology you are very much familiar with these drugs bisphosphonates risedronate alendronate ibendronic acid so these are the same cells that inhibit the osteoclasts so they inhibit the osteoclasts so they stop the bone resorption so this is what we do first up the moment we decide that this is a patient with osteoporosis but the problem sometimes the bisphosphonates they are producing side effects common is problem esophageal reflux and ulcerations and mind you prolonged use prolonged use atypical proximal femur stress fractures so even that remains a possibility a typical proximal femur stress fractures and sometimes you are given bisphosphonates they are just a failure because the dexa is not improving despite bisphosphonate therapy so when this becomes the situation uh you know you are having osteoporosis and there is bisphosphonate failure this is the scenario where you move to teriparatide or denizumab so i mean to say the teriparatide and denizumab they are not the first line drugs they are the second line drugs for osteoporosis <coughs> and they are specifically to be used when you have documented a bisphosphonate failure 
may be side effects to bisphosphonates, may be a failure of bisphosphonate therapy, whatever. And mind you, even with this drug denosumab, there are some side effects that you need to know. The most significant of them all, it's been associated with this problem, osteonecrosis of the jaw, that's also seen with the bisphosphonates. Because somewhere down the line, both the drugs, denizumab and bisphosphonate, are somehow tackling the osteoclasts. So that is something you have to worry if you have started with this denizumab. Okay, but I hope you are clear with what is osteoporosis. You are clear what is the first line treatment for osteoporosis. And I hope you are clear that in case there is failure of bisphosphonates in osteoporosis, the alternative wonderful treatment options you have and that the fact that the options I've just spoken of, terrified denosumab, the combination also tends to be synergistic. So that's all from my side. Wish you all the best. Hope you enjoyed the session. For more such sessions, please subscribe to Unacademy.